Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the My Amazon Guy live Q&A every Friday, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Sorry if you can hear my cat, she's meowing right now. Uh, I am Jason Master Mateo and uh, I'm here every Friday to answer any and all of your Amazon seller, vendor, Walmart questions and a lot of tax questions lately as well. But I am not a tax professional, but I will do my best to point you in the correct direction. Um, real quick, uh, before we get started with the questions, big thing this week on the first was all of the new fees that uh, came into play specifically, or especially the inventory placement fees that are now um, live. And if you all haven't had the pleasure of sending in an FBA shipment this week, uh, you will see something new that looks like this, uh, where you create your shipment and you'll have some options um, where there's no placement fee service, for example, on this shipment, uh, if you want to ship to four different warehouses, or if you just wanna make one shipment to one warehouse, you will have to pay a per unit fee uh, that is scalable depending on the inbound region that you're going to be shipping into. So, um, sucks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, one way to combat this is, uh, you know, if, if uh, profitability is at stake here, um, we've been, you know, slightly increasing prices to see, uh, to negate some of that, but being very careful to make sure that conversion isn't affected too badly. Uh, but yeah, this is this is not cool. Um, another thing, Amazon uh, lending is uh, kind of, what's it called, disassembling itself. They're going to stop doing direct lending and um, just use third party uh, providers. So if you uh, have been using Amazon lending, you should have gotten a notice or an email that um, when your loan matures, uh, they will no longer be doing any more loans uh, on Amazon. The joke internally here was, uh, "Oh, they realize their customers can't pay <laughs> can't pay them, so uh, they're they're getting out of the loan business." Uh, quite uh, the stir this week, like I said. But we will uh, answer um, member questions first. If you want to become a member uh, or subscribe, you can go to the bottom of your YouTube page there and click subscribe or join. And uh, once we are done with the member questions, we'll answer all the rest of the questions. So let's get started. Eduardo, what's up, man? Jason, if I'm selling a product and want to change the presentation and packaging, can I still use the same ASIN for the product? Would that be a problem with Amazon? It, 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 is, it, is, it is perfectly fine, as long as it's very, very similar uh, as far as the product. It's not a completely different product. And what I mean by that is you're selling towels and you're just changing the packaging or maybe the material or something like that to make it better. Um, that's fine. And uh, you, but if you want to change your towel listing into, you know, a lamp, that's not fine. Um, so what you would do in this situation is you create a new SKU on the same ASIN um, with the new packaging and you ship that in. So you can keep control of um, the old packaging versus the new packaging. As that ships in, keep it inactive and uh, that SKU, the new SKU, and uh, uh, get ready to update all of your content with the new photos and all that stuff. Um, depending on how much old inventory you have, you can wait for that to sell out before you update content and keep the new listing inactive. Or if you just wanna get rid of the old listing um, stock, you can, uh, once everything's checked in on the new listing, make it active, update the content, turn off the old listing, and then you know get that recalled back to you uh, or, uh, or get it destroyed. Yeah, very common. Uh, people change their packaging all the time, update their products. Uh, this is perfectly fine. Uh, you want to keep the reviews. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's why it's cool. You see this with seasonal packaging as well, especially in the grocery category. You'll see, um, you know, uh, I don't know, Skittles or something that have like, you know, Easter theme right now or something like that. It's it's perfectly cool. All right. Next member question. Jeffrey, what's up? In the ad console, I can select percent of new to brand sales in the top section of drop downs above the graph, but that percent is way off. It doesn't match the percent new to brand sales total at the bottom columns. Yeah, this 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 is you know kind of a a wacky metric that uh, we we there's no way to ch like reference this or check this. Um, 
besides maybe a little bit into um, the the uh, brand search analytics and stuff like that, uh, how accurate it is, it, you know, um, I can't tell you. <laughs> and I don't know why it's off like that all the time, but uh, use the data <laughs> as best you can. Sorry, I don't have a better uh, answer there. Grigor says, Jason, nice to see it. Nice to see you, Grigor. Just talked with uh, Grigor yesterday. That was, uh, we had a nice um, call on uh, some brand registry issues. Uh, it looks like those are our member questions so far. So we'll start at the top here. Tanya says, uh, as we manage pricing on products, is it best to change pricing frequently or keep it at the same level? Well, you need to give some time when you're doing any kind of A-B testing, which is what this is, uh, pricing A-B testing. Um, you, you need to make sure that uh, you you have the information and data uh, on you know your conversion rate and such and your ad performance when you do raise a price or lower a price. And if you're doing that randomly back and forth all over the place, um, it's not going to mean anything. Uh, so uh, static for a while and uh, and test. Sometimes conversion goes up when you increase price. I see it. You know, I've seen it thousands of times. You increase price and now your product's more premium or that price, that particular price point works better um, uh, it, it, within the, the competition and the search and all that. Um, and sometimes, you know, conversion will go down, um, vice versa. Seen conversion go down when price is lowered. And you'd be like, oh, no, why would, why would conversion go down with a lower price? Well, maybe it's now, you know, uh, too cheap for people and they'll think it's, you know, a cheaper product or something like that. So uh, definitely always be testing with that, but don't um, radically be changing your prices all the time. I am cool says, add question, a keyword which is not generating sales in the last 30 days, but used to generate sales before, and the ACoS was low. Do we keep those keyword or remove it for not generating, generating sales anymore? Well, first, uh, I would tackle this problem in a troubleshooting aspect where I would make sure I'm not uh, having any types of search suppressions or ads that are suppressed or anything like that, making sure that, um, you know, you didn't like change the SKU or something like that or add a different SKU and that's not in your campaign. If all of that is perfectly fine and it's just a search volume problem on, on the uh, old keyword, well... I mean, keywords change. If you put in fidget spinner right now and compare it to five years ago, the search volume is going to be way different, right? So, or maybe fidget spinners was longer than that. I don't, I don't remember. But uh, if it's not generating any sales, but it's still generating spend, um, and you have, you know, a good amount of data on that, then that keyword might not be good anymore. It might not be uh, right in that particular ad campaign. Uh, it was good a while ago. Why is it? Why is it changing? figure it out, type that keyword in. Is there a new competition that's doing something different? Is your product not standing out? Are you getting clicks still, but you're not getting conversion? You need to uh, look at that. If it's just not good anymore and you've done all that, then um, lower bids and 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 see if that helps. Uh, but there are times where, you know, all the time, that's why you got to be managing your campaigns where something that was working for years and years and years and years uh, just falls off. It, that's why you need to be uh, keeping up with the uh, the new new types of searches, uh, new keywords, and, and all that good stuff. Um, but there there is a chance that it, you would remove it from that ad group. It's just not good anymore. It could perform better in a different ad group. That's what is so great about the Amazon space. James, what is the best way to get Vine reviews on a new variation and combine it with the parent listing? Also, would it what is the best way to close out variation permanently? Well, um, if you're all in, uh, you're gonna just put your children out there and don't parent them and enroll each one individually uh, into Vine and wait for those reviews to come in and then parent them afterward or add it to the uh, existing parent. If you're asking uh, second part of the question, how do I add a child to an existing parent? There's a step-by-step -step video on our channel of uh, yours truly uh, guides you uh, in, in very de <laughs> extreme detail on how to add a child to a current parentage. To close out a variation permanently, very simple, I'll share my screen. You're just gonna go to your inventory 
and we'll find the parentage in here somewhere. Here's a variation right here. And you're just going to click the little parent there. And then delete products and listings. It's only going to delete the parent if you just click the parent there. And that's not going to affect any of your reviews on the children or anything like that, but your reviews are going to split back to the uh, ASIN that they're attached to. So there won't be combined reviews anymore because the parent will be gone. Let's see what else we got here. We got some more member questions coming in. Touchstone adjacent product loss rank at a high price, currently not showing organically. Will dropping price and launch PPC re rank the product, or does this require removal from stock? So it's not showing up organically, even when you type like the exact title, you might have a search suppression. Uh, double check touch, Touchstone on, uh, you know, like get the ASIN. Let's use uh, one of these Tumblr listings and uh, type it into Amazon, paste it into Amazon like this. <coughs> if you don't see your organic listing like this, um, then you have a search suppression that uh, needs to be addressed. You open a ticket and see what's going on. Usually some adult flag or something like that. Um, but uh, in, in addition to that, let's see here. So drop price, uh, you're, you're trying to get some movement here. I would enroll it in Vine um, if you haven't yet. Um, I would do your own test order. Just buy the product. Obviously, don't leave a review for yourself or anything like that. Uh, just to kickstart it back. If there is no category issue or adult suppression or anything like that. Um, but definitely check out. Make sure it's not search suppressed first. Touchstone says, could the wrong product type cause lot? Yes, 100%. You could be category orphaned. You'll find that out in that ticket as well. If it's not adult flag, the second most common issue is a category orphan or an item type keyword that no longer exists or got migrated by Amazon, all kinds of different issues there, in which case you'll need to um, uh, usually delete the listing for 24 hours and then do a full update with the proper uh, browse node tree, uh, item type keyword and category. Touchdown says, sorry, it's not clear. Not showing up on first page organically. Well, I mean, that's a different story. <laughs> There's plenty of products that <laughs> don't show up uh, organically. Yeah, you need to you need to play the game and and get your PPC going and um, and uh, everything else. Make sure your listing's fully optimized. Make sure it's in the right category, and uh, you you need to get sales velocity going. Uh, price can affect that if you're saying it is way too high of a price. Jordan Lee, what's up, man? Says, hey, when launching a new product, is it a good idea to run a main A-B experiment straight to launch or wait a few weeks? Don't do it when you're launching the product. You should do it before you launch the product. You can use a service like PicFu um, if you're not sure on um, which main image to use or which secondary image to use and um, and go from there. After you've you know uh, decided that and you've launched and your honeymoon period, yeah, always be testing. Try out um, new uh, main images or new secondary images, and uh, you can be A-B a -B testing that way. Tanya says, should keywords and ad cam campaigns that are showing less than 5% be removed from the campaign? I mean, it it, it, it depends on on like what we're talking about. This is, could be product dependent, dependent, how much search volume those keywords are actually getting in general um how many keywords you have in that ad group or camp uh, campaign like uh tons of different uh, variables here but there can be uh when when you're saying showing less than five percent i'm guessing that means uh your clicks or your conversion uh, i'm not sure what that uh, exactly means but uh the, the, there's uh, need more information here tanya <laughs> Uh, Handy says, why is Amazon miscalculating shipping speed on, on buy shipping? If UPS ground would deliver the promised day, why does it sometimes default to a faster shipping speed and air service? Why is Amazon doing that? I, I don't know. Um, but you need to go in your shipping settings uh, and your templates and make sure that um, uh, your settings are correct. It sounds like there's some sort of expedited option or something that you're dealing with here. Or are, are you or you're saying that um, you're already offering expedited? It says UPS Ground would deliver the promised day, um, but your your uh, display on your 
uh, product detail page is saying it's going to be there um, like a day later. Uh, definitely check your handling time, check everything that um, in your shipping templates. And um, another thing is, you know, it sounds like you're doing FBM. It, it could be a regional thing too. Like you're checking um, with your address on the product detail page, enter a different uh, zip code in a, uh, in a different region of the US and, and see what that says. Uh, Jordan Lee says, how to get Amazon to not ship my products as Sayak. <laughs> my product comes in a gift box with some arriving damage as it is no outer box packaging from Amazon. Yep. I did a nice video the other day on ships and own container with that poor Lego box that was completely destroyed. Um, you, this, this is, and in that video, I said that this is really hard program to get out of. Um, the, the multiple times that clients have come to us and we had to get out of this program, we had to, uh, make a case that, um, this was causing a negative customer experience. And we did that with the photos of the returns or the reviews saying the box that arrived damage and screenshots of the customer messages asking for replacements. Um, that's how we got them to take it out of the program. Uh, so that is the way to do it. Uh, make sure you have evidence of why um, it needs to go into a regular Amazon box. All right, we got a new member. Ryan, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. Ryan says, how do you get an Amazon account permanently removed from Seller Central? For example, a client that you no longer work with. They remove you from all perms, but they still appear in the drop down. Yes. <laughs> so um there's really not too much agency support <laughs> from amazon we kind of had to figure it out on our own how to um do the drone accounts and all that stuff which i've discussed before um but uh even clients that you know um have moved on and uh, we don't service them anymore they show in the the drop downs still uh, even though we have no access and um, we've removed ourselves, they've removed us. Uh, and sometimes they just disappear, Ryan. And even even more interesting is after a very long time, it switches from the um, the account name, like, you know, Joe's Goods or whatever, to the merchant token ID, just a long number. Um, so very strange. Uh, we have to uh, make a new drone email every month or so um because there is a cap because of that it's around 50 when it starts getting weird um as far as like not being able to accept invites and stuff like that but uh yeah it is a little bit of a pain for sure touchstone says uh but if category item type is correct could the product type another flat file attribute also cause loss of ranking yes it could be it could be uh, a complete category orphanage or item type keyword orphanage for sure Margo says, our product has become out of stock. Our stocks eight already checking in, but Amazon takes long in making it available for sale. Okay. Any tips on once we get back in stock so that we can get back to the sales velocity? Well, hopefully it wasn't out of stock for too long, but um, expect to be spending a little bit more than you normally would uh, in that uh on those on that particular product in your advertising uh, make sure everything's kind of like refresh uh, if you haven't done seo in a while do that and uh, uh, plan to spend some money to get your ranking back basically so impressions uh, additional sales but higher a costs higher tacos uh, for for a while um, depending on how popular your brand is and stuff like that if you have good branded search it's a lot easier Ryan says, uh, what is the best way to get negative reviews removed while staying within terms of service? Also, how to request reviews now that we cannot email customers. Uh, Helium 10 has that automatic request review thing. Um, Merchant Spring has it. Uh, you can manually click the uh, request a review on the orders. But um, reviews come in with sales velocity. It's not something to, to bang your head on. Um, 
to remove negative reviews, you need to find something in the review that is against the reviews terms of service. And that can be anything from uh, the customer referencing another brand. Um, we've got been able to get uh, listings removed uh, or reviews removed where they put a photo of the product and in the background there was like a beer can, uh, stuff like that. <laughs> but for the most part, it's really hard to get reviews removed, uh, negative re reviews removed. Um, if it's, you know, just saying, hey, I bought this and it broke the second day and um, uh, it sucks, you know. Um, if it's an honest review, you're going to have to deal with it and then uh, address the problem if it's a problem that happens a lot. It's saying, you know, the, the bezel broke and you have multiples of people saying that, then fix the bezel, right? Um, or address it, say like, oh, don't use a screwdriver to, uh, you know, um, apply the bezel or anything like that uh, in the listing. All right, continue on. When adding new key, oh, hey, what's up, Jason? Uh, when adding new keywords, what is the threshold you have for IS or IR that you would use to determine if you will add that given keyword? If 100% IS, IR, do you add it? Are you talking about advertising or SEO? I'm sorry, Jason. I'm confused on this one. <laughs> uh, in general, when you're adding new keywords, um, you're, you're looking for high velocity, high search volume, or, or niche. Uh, okay, he said ads. All right. Um, you, you're going to have to be testing. And this is a, based on search volume, too. Uh, uh, how much search volume those keywords are, are getting. Are you pulling these out of auto campaigns? Are you pulling these out of broad campaigns where they've already had hits? Um, completely determined, uh, completely uh, dependent on, on product how your campaigns are structured, uh, what your goal is with adding these new keywords, do they exist in other campaigns? Um, lots of different uh, aspects here. But uh, yeah, sorry, uh, not a great answer there. <laughs> Ryan, what happens if their account gets suspended? Uh, I'm guessing this is regarding... Oh. Nothing. Oh, the 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 permission. No. So your your account is not linked to a suspended account if you got prop if you got permissions properly. Where you're getting where you would get linked to accounts if you were manually logging in um, to the admin account uh, in a different place and then you know it gets suspended. But even then, the IP crossovers aren't aren't as bad as like something like eBay, for example. Um, but uh, the there, there shouldn't be any issue there as long as you uh, were just a user uh, in the permissions. Uh, but that's why you always had uh, should have backup drone accounts as well. Jeff says, uh, any recommendations on the best way to package coffee mugs to sell FBA and maybe each in their own craft box with padding? Other methods, thoughts? Yeah, so have experience here. Um, hard, thick, little crafts. Oh, geez, my watch. Um, thick cardboard you can get it you can get these in bulk for real cheap um they'll even like put your logo on them some of the the suppliers um make sure it's thick cardboard though and then on the inside bubble wrap um uh, the uh or, or uh some done inch like craft paper or something like that however you want to make it look but coffee cups are pretty hardy um we run into problems is uh you know like thin beer glasses and wine glasses and stuff like that, where you have to be really eggshelly and careful. Touchstone says, uh, sorry, any strategies, Jason, for managing for the new inbound placement fees? We ship a single pallet and splitting it up into four pallets would increase cost four times. Yeah, it sucks, man. You need to do a, if it's not giving you the option to pay to, um, only ship to one destination, which I've, it, we've seen that as well, where you don't even get that option. Um, you need to do a cost analysis, uh, COGS, everything again. And it's unfortunately time to raise prices. Uh, that's 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 how it is now. Um, all right, let's see here. Where was I? 
Sorry, I'm scrolling all the way back up to the top. All right. Um, I lost my place. I'm so sorry. I think we were here. Super fog. Since there is no decreased bid percentage, is it advisable to decrease overall bids, all campaigns, and increase specific hours of the day? to use day party. You need to test day party, but you have the data. You can see when orders are coming in, um, you know, historically, uh, uh, what times and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, you know, with day partying, it's a, it, it's a, um, it's an increase. So you're going to start at a low and um, bid up uh, at the hours if you're doing hourly or, or what have you, or, or daily um, and, and set a, set a rule. And then you're going to have to test with that. It's going to be different for every keyword, every ad group, every campaign. Uh, there's no there's no blanket strategy here. Shoreful, uh, I have a new seller account on Amazon with professional mode. I would I want to do FBA. I have a product on my hand, but need professional to launch the product successfully. I need service. Please help. OK. Um, would be happy to help you. Uh, you can go to myamazonguide.com and there's a little chat box there or a little yellow button at the top that says get a proposal. And uh, one of our people will be in touch with you and maybe we can work together. But um, any other option, if you decide to do it on yourself, we have some courses. We have the YouTube videos. Uh, mag-school.com has a launching course that you can uh, check out as well. Uh, that's how I would go about it, short film. Dauda says, what is the best practice to get product reviews using product insert card? What can I do and not do? What should I watch out for being in compliance with Amazon policies? So on product inserts, you you, you can't ask for reviews or anything like that um, or incentivize like, oh, we'll send you a gift card or whatever. You will get caught. I get coaching calls all the time where people did this and they're like, oh, we didn't do anything wrong. We just said, hey, go to this site and we'll give you a $5 Amazon gift card if you leave us a review, you know, um, can't do that. What you can do is increase the customer experience. So your product insert could have, um, you know, uh, a nice note on it, uh, something about the brand, um, uh, instructions, a QR code that goes to a video of how to use the product, all that kind of stuff, which will um, make the customer more inclined to give you a review. Reviews are based on product velocity. Um, the more sales you get, the more reviews you're going to get. Uh, that's just how it is. Muhammad says, hello, Jason. How can I change my ASIN on a different marketplace and keep the reviews? I have the same ASIN listed on two marketplaces. Now my reviews keep merging on both marketplaces. Why wouldn't you want the same ASIN here? You want your reviews to be merged. You, you you don't want to make a different ASIN. You're going to get it flagged for duplicate and they'll merge it back anyways if it's the same product. Yeah, I don't know why you want to do this. It doesn't make any sense, Mohammed. Um, you want your reviews to be merged in all the marketplaces. Tanya says, is there any way to avoid uh, or reduce removal fees? Nope. <laughs> you can try liquidation, um, but then you'll probably see your products on the the uh, marketplace sold by someone else. Dauda says, I have over 6K spend a month with zero sales. Oh, and I have one, two clicks from search terms from phrase matches. Impressions are good. All relevant terms of my product. Can you show us how you will resolve? You have a serious conversion problem here. You're getting impressions and clicks. Oh, well, not many clicks. Uh, and you've spent 6k with no sales that is a serious serious conversion problem your product is not looking right for those keywords in the space with the with the um, competition that could be price or main image or something else is you're saying the keywords are relevant um well they're they're not converting so something's really wrong there do it so i'd first tackle the listing here if you've got 6k spend zero sales and clicks and then i'd be looking at um why those uh, keywords aren't converting or if they actually are relevant for your product. 
All right. Uh, so I don't lose my space. I'm going to just kind of go down the list here. Okay. GH Tech says, I sell grocery items. I want to sign up for remote fulfillment with FBA, getting export restrictions to Canada and Mexico. How would one get the compliance figured out? <laughs> so he wants to enroll in, in NARF, North, North American Remote Fulfillment, or at least that's what it used to be called. Uh, you need to get all of the proper documentations for importing food or whatever it is in grocery that you're selling as far uh, and the correct certification from the Canadian Health uh, Authority, whatever their FDA is, as well as the Mexican um, to be able to do this. Uh, so you are in for a nice little um, fun time. Uh, I would go with Canada first, unless this is a specific um, a treat or product that is very popular in Mexico. Mexico is just a smaller marketplace right now. Matthew says how to get completely removed as a user on account. Clients delete user email from their account and also delete off-brand registry, but their account still... Yeah, uh, I think we answered that one already. Facebook user says, good morning. I started a campaign with product targeting and the ACoS was around 30%, but my keyword rank dropped from three to seven. What will be the reason? Your keyword rank dropped from three to seven on that keyword. It could be anything, dude. Uh, <laughs> how, what's the timeline on this? Uh, it could be more people, uh, more competition in the space. Somebody came in, a uh, competitor came back into stock. Uh, people uh, searching for the product more than usual. It could be a seasonality thing, all kinds of different stuff. Travis says, I screen print uh, shirts to order. Okay. Is any way to get around the auto return policy? I get lots of returns for people buying it for events. Halloween, I sold, I one item sold thousands used as a costume and 25% return. Welcome to apparel and shoes. Um, that's actually a pretty uh, low return rate for uh, that category. <laughs> um, that's just part of uh, business. You need to put it into your into your uh, uh, pricing and your profitability account that you know 25% um, of your items are going to be returned and likely not be able to be refurbished or used or sold again. Um, then you need to take that into your uh, thing. And we have uh, multiple shoe clients uh, here and um, returns uh, there are in the 30s, uh, have a very large apparel brand as well. Same thing. I think that their returns are in the 28 percentiles. Um, that's just clothing. Um, that's part of the category. Uh, we got that one from Ryan. Let's keep on going. Mahid says, good morning. I started a campaign. Oh, we already answered that one, Mahid. Duplicate questions in here. All right. Uh, Shoreful says, need service for new product with trademark and brand registry, PPC. Okay, yeah. Go to myamazonguy.com, click the little yellow, get a proposal button. We'll help you out there, Shoreful. Lame Lazy says, bro, can you give me any of the models in your back? <laughs> all my uh, all my trinkets back there. <clears throat> Do it. Do it. It says, <clears throat> oh, we got this one. We got this one. Uh, Mahid says, same thing. Duplicates. Lots of duplicates in here. There's Shoreful again. Tanya, sorry for the confusion. The less than 5% is top of search. Um, no, you need to be playing with your top of search if you're getting um, if you're getting sales and and and, and good um, action out of that particular keyword. So I, I would start testing bidding up on 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 top of search and see if that does anything. There's plenty of uh, keywords that will kill it on top of search or on product pages, but not vice versa. So always be testing. Super frog, skew one and skew two of the same ASIN. SKU1 is old inventory. SKU2 is new inventory. Updated the packaging, did some value add. Listing is updated to show new inventory. SKU1 old inventory was out. Stock and listing closed. Amazon somehow found 10 units and shipped it to customers who thought they were buying the updated product. Yep, that's why you always need to make sure that um, that first SKU, the old inventory, is closed completely. Uh, Amazon will... will if, if you've been selling a product for an FBA for a while, they're, 
they lose stuff all the time. And, you know, sometimes they reimburse for you for it. Sometimes you have to get on them to reimburse you for it. And sometimes they find stuff a year later and put it back into your inventory. If it's on that same SKU, it's going to go out. But if that SKU is closed, it's going to go into stranded and you'll you'll see it there and you can pull it back. So um, nothing you can do here now that the damage is done. Just sell more and make sure that you close that first SKU and uh, uh, and make sure they're not uh, so they, they're not able to find something and send it out to a customer. Hey says, are there downsides to putting two closely related products under the same parent for ranking and for appearing more in the search results? I, I mean, no, there can be. Uh, it, a, 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 another child can sometimes, you know, bring your ranking down. We talked about this last week, I think. Um, if it's like an ugly color or something like that, it can it can off put the customer to go elsewhere. Um, but again, with 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 uh, similar products. It's always better, you know, uh, you know, if it's just like, let's just say tumblers or whatever, you have a black one and a, a blue one, put them in a parentage. It, 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 it's a, it, it's going to work better than um, the individual listings most of the time. And it's going to be easier to advertise uh, much more convenient for you as well. Uh, hold on. I, I got to go to this one. Okay. Eduardo, if we have a parent ASIN with X amount ratings and delete or detach one child from the parent, will we lose the proportional number of views for the removed product? Yes. The the um, reviews are attached at the ASIN level for the children. So if you take one out of the parentage, it's going to take its reviews with it, and those are going to go down in the parentage. Ryan says, uh, we are listing ASINs in Canada on different selling account that they sell very well in the USA. Are all the updates linked if we update keywords titles bullets etc in canada will it affect the us asin uh, sometimes is the answer here it's really wonky uh, it doesn't sound like you're you're connecting them via on the same account but still um heck there's sometimes we'll update a listing uh in you know uh, france or something like that and then all of a sudden the the us listing um goes to french uh, same with images and stuff like that. Just always be prepared to check and have your backup. Usually when that happens, if we go back to the US and upload the correct US content, we have a backup, um, it stays. And then the French one stays as well uh, in France. Uh, but uh, most of the time, it's going to stay separate here. You're going to have to do each one individually unless you're, you're uh, direct linking um, on that same account. Subban so says, uh, what's the solution of no impressions and no clicks? I tried increasing bids and placements, but no results. My listing is fully optimized. If you are, again, if you have no impressions, then, well, this, I guess this is different. You, no impressions means you're not bidding enough. Um, so your increasing of your bids uh, is not enough, even if it's like above the recommended. That's what no impressions. It could also be a troubleshooting issue. Uh, make sure you're listing is not search suppressed, make sure the ad is actually delivering. Um, it's really strange. And it also depends on like, if you just started the campaign yesterday, it takes a while for campaigns to, to kind of uh, get going uh, sometimes. But uh, it sounds like there's a big issue. It could be a, the keyword you're targeting, or it doesn't actually have search volume. So there's going to be no impressions. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, touchstone. After an account owner transfers right ownership to my account and I remove rights from original owner, will I get control of the listing contribution or will I see problems and go to support? There's always gonna be little nuances here when you're doing something like this. Um, sometimes you have to reconnect uh, the merchant token ID to the uh, account. Sometimes it works uh, without having any issues. It just depends. Um, majority of the time it goes pretty smoothly, but if this particular brand, um, you're talking rights ownership, uh, so brand registry, if it's been invited to multiple different users and stuff like that before that can cause issues and contributions and that sort of thing. But, um, usually it goes pretty smoothly there. Uh, but you say, I tried to find your description of account transfer and agency videos. So it looks like it's missing or edited. 
it's a Saturday video from like two months ago. It's on it's on YouTube. Here, let's go find it. Let's find it here. YouTube. <clears throat> Amazon guy. All right. So let's go to our page and then videos. And then let's type in Saturday. Oh, it's under the live. It's under the live section. Sorry. Saturday. It's going to be this one and this one. And both of these videos right here, um, I talked about uh, agency transfer. And I think I also talked about uh, how to make drone accounts if you're an agency. All right. Touchstone, what do you mean um, by direct linking? So like when you enroll your products in remote fulfillment, there's an option for them to automatically sync and create the listings for you, um, but you're not doing that. So um, I'm guessing you're you're just manually adding them on the, on the other account. So um, that's what I mean by that. Ryan says, do I need to be added to brand registry to get access to brand analytics? No, actually. Um, but they do need to um, set your permissions in the global permissions on your user invite uh, to give you access to brand analytics uh, and all that good uh, brand stuff. John, what's up, man? If I have one more child, I think my overall ranking would take. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, bring a vibe. There goes my camera. Why am I blurry? Why does it do that? All right. Hello. Okay. After my account is verified, what is my next step? Uh, depends what verification you're doing right now. If it's identity, your next step would be bank account verification. You can do them simultaneously. Then tax verification, then uploading your business insurance. Um, probably a couple other things. But um, once your account, once you do the, uh, if you're doing Informed Consumers Act right now, I'm assuming, or brand new account, uh, you should be able to have access to your uh, inventory uh, after the identity in the bank, I think. And then um, you can start uploading while you get the other stuff uh, handled, like taxes and insurance and stuff like that. Dauda says, my phrase match campaign makes 15K in sales in it. I have 6K spend from the search terms, confirming that keyword are relevant. Product image is good. My issue is those one, two clicks, no sales. I would like to know what I could or should do with those other onesie clicks and use that 6k lost elsewhere Could you go to your phrase match campaign and check your search term well you need to do negations if you're on those keywords if this is a uh, free yeah go to your go to your search terms sort by spend look for anything in the last 90 days uh, where you got um spend but no sales or maybe like not many sales never negate a good keyword but some keywords that are good keywords aren't good in certain ad uh, ad groups or campaigns, but work perfectly well in others. So use the data to your advantage there and uh, start working on some negations for sure. Nick says, my client's products are hooked up to a random brand registry brand storefront with a similar name. How do I fix this? Ha. All right, so let's do a demo. This happens uh, with brands that like let other people like put their products up or something like that, or they have a very similar name to another brand and Amazon automatically hooked it up. But um, what you need to do, Nick, is you need to build the correct brand store first, um, add the products to it, and usually that will override the old one. If you've already done that, this is a ticketing process that we have to go through, showing Amazon that it's connected to the incorrect brand. Um, and we, uh, but make sure you have the brand store built with all of the products linked in the brand store somewhere, you know, uh, doesn't have to be a pretty brand store if you just want to like get this going. So it stops linking to that other product, but, um, this, this happens a lot. So, uh, you take it through brand registry on this one, um, say, Hey, we are the brand owner. We are the, 
sole seller of our products. Our products are in our brand store, but they're linking to this other random one, and they'll uh, they'll uh, help you with the syncing up the uh, the correct uh, brand store there. Nick says, also, guys, you're always so quick to Amazon news and changes. Where are you getting this news and info from so fast? Is there a source or just hands-on seeing it yourself? There's over 500 people here at my Amazon guy, um, all working on Amazon. Um, well, we have like IT and HR and stuff like that. But most people, most of them are working on Amazon. So, you know, imagine 450 people in accounts all day long seeing new things that pop up or new issues, stuff like that. Uh, that's pretty much it. We get to experience everything and we share all the knowledge in the chat and then we get to make content like that so um i also use like i'll see stuff on facebook uh, groups sometimes you know uh, it's mostly people you know complaining about account suspensions and stuff like that but um that's how that's how i do it. i don't have like any insider information or anything like that we got that one Oh, we got that one. RH says, PPC question, if I have a keyword, cost per click two and my bid is one, should I wait till cost per click is close to my bid and then start increasing or decreasing? The cost per click is going to gonna change all the time. You need to, if you if you want to bid on this keyword uh, and be competitive on it, you need to, um, if you're worried, uh, I'm guessing you're doing like fixed bid here or something like that um the cost per click is not a good metric to go by like almost never uh it's going to change steve says someone made a wholesale bundle with one of my clients products and bundled it with a generic item and it is under their random brand name can i file a trademark complaint or is what they did allowed this is a tough one so if i wanted to make a candy bundle for example um and I went to Costco and bought some Skittles and some Snickers and some other things. And I was already ungated in grocery and I made like a bundle gift box out of that. It's most likely going to be perfectly fine. And um, I could brand it under Jason's candy boxes or something like that if I had that trademark. Um, sometimes you can uh, you can stop this. Uh, the best way, honestly, is outside of Amazon. If this is going to protect the brand, is sending a nice little letter, um, having your clients send a nice little C and D letter. Uh, most of these people that are doing this don't want any problems. They'll go away, they'll sell out, and they'll go away, or they'll go sell out on eBay or something like that. Um, that would be uh, my advice on what I've seen work better without crossing any lines with uh, reporting trademark infringement or anything like that. Because if it is your client's product and it's real, it's legitimate, um, you could get um, you know some flags on on your on your uh, report a violation tool, uh, which you don't want to do because once they take that away, it's really hard to get back. Steve says, "How long does it take to get data back on PPC dashboard? Say, for example, when someone buys, uh, sometimes it's supposed to be attribution of seven to ten days. It's different for uh, campaign types." Um, sometimes 14 days, it, it, it de depends on what you're doing, but, um, you know, you're, you're usually pretty safe, uh, like 10 days, uh, to get the exact uh, numbers there. Tanya says, when is transparency really necessary? Amazon promotes this always. I only recommend transparency in the most extreme cases. And what I mean by that is constant counterfeiters on your products or, or, um, brands copycatting the products just constantly. Uh, if it's just a couple hijackers here and there, those are easy to get away you know, get rid of with your brand registry tools and stuff like that usually. But transparency can be a mess. I'm dealing with one project right now where Amazon flagged their own inventory, almost a thousand units that are all transparency coded as counterfeit. And they've been sitting there for six months and they're incurring storage fees and Amazon keeps telling us that they're counterfeit after bin check, after bin check, after bin check. Um, and they have the transparency codes on them. So there are some extreme cases like that where on why I hate the program um, because Amazon's not smart. But um, those are the those are the, the, the times when you're going to use this program, in my opinion. Shoreful says, does Amazon allow a zipper lock poly bag? Zipper lock poly bag? Let's type that in. I'm guessing this is some sort of storage thing. 
zipper lock poly bag. Yeah, there you go. There's your new, I'm guessing that's your product you're launching <laughs> or are you putting something in the product? If you're asking a, a if you can put the, the, uh, your product in this, uh, just make sure, uh, I would rather use, you know, like a, a regular poly bag, make sure it has a child suffocation warning on it. You can buy those in bulk from anywhere uh, with the child suffocation warning already printed on it. Superfrog says, one of my trademarks are about to get rejected by USPTO. How long do I have before Amazon revokes my brand registry? How can I reapply with different brand name and reinstate? So um, sometimes years, you'll still have access to A plus content, stuff like that. Normally around nine months after the uh, rejection comes in is when um, stuff will get shut down. Now, when I say shut down, it just means you can't use brand registry tools, stuff like that, uh, brand analytics. Um, and But your A plus content usually stays up there as well as the brand store. You just can't change it. Uh, to answer the other part of your question, how can I reapply with different brand name? Uh, easily, just how you got your first trademark. Go find an, a trademark that's going to work um, with the USPTO and uh, get a brand registered. So you'll need a, a picture of the product with the new brand name on it. And um, then you're going to have to do a brand name change if you want to keep the current product that's in there. Uh, th that's That's pretty much the process. Dubago says, Hibago. <clears throat> Hibago. I have a product that can be sold in two other categories. I'm planning to create different ASIN for those two new categories. What's the best solution to use some of the stock that I have already on Amazon? If it's already in there in FBA, it's already attached to that SKU and that ASIN. So you can't like have them transfer it over to a new SKU. But this is a very smart uh, strategy. Uh, we do this all the time. Uh, it's a great way to make a new product without having it to make a new product. If you have <clears throat> multiple different uh, demographics so that you can uh, cater to the imagery without having like everything, you know, uh, if it can work on a motorcycle and a bicycle, you can have one listing that's just motorcycle stuff and pictures and the other ones, you know, bicycle pictures and stuff like that. Great strategy. Ryan says, I have a ton of listings with zero FBM, FBA stock. They haven't sold for months and no one else is listing on them. Can I delete the SKUs from my catalog or could that affect the actual listing? No, the ASIN is forever, Ryan. The ASIN exists in Amazon forever and the reviews that are on it and attached to it as well. Um, if you discontinue a product and I find it at a liquidation sale five years later, I can scan the barcode or uh, find the product ASIN and um, it'll be there again. Same thing if you decide to sell that product again in the long run. It says, i.e. those listings deleted altogether from Amazon if no one is, no, they're, they're there forever. The only thing that gets permanently deleted from Amazon and still it's probably in the catalog back end somewhere is illegal products. But even then you'll see those um, still in the back end if it's on an account like um, certain, like I, I, the only reason I know this because there, there was a client that was selling like knives or something like that. And some of the knives weren't allowed on Amazon. So Ryan says, had a couple of listings that just disappeared. No one on Amazon seems to be able to trace them. If you're trying to find an old listing that you you sold before and and um, you don't remember, or you don't you never created a CLR, uh, I always recommend going in your emails where you got your sales notifications and you'll be able to see the ASIN there and those emails like, oh, you've, you know, your product is sold or whatever, like way, 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 way back. Rosina says, paid full Vine review fee and Amazon took 30 units out of inventory to issue to Vine voices. Got only 25 reviews. Shouldn't Amazon pay? For no, Vine reviews are not guaranteed, Rosina. It says it in the terms and services. Um, you're lucky that uh, they, the five, uh, usually that means they didn't like it. Uh, and instead of leaving a bad review, they they just said, you know, I don't, I don't like it. Now, on the Vine reviewers and in that program, there is a requirement to leave review for a certain percentage of your claims. So uh, they, they do have to maintain their status on that, but it has nothing to do with your product, your, your review claim or anything like that. 
Touchstone says if you're direct linking listening content update, US could reflect in France. And where is it? No, no. That I was talking about NARF Touchstone. Uh, with with the uh, when you when you enroll in remote fulfillment, uh, the France issue is is random. I have no idea why it does that. Sometimes it happens. It happens with Spain too. Sometimes where upload content in Spain and the U.S. listing like gets we're not even in the U.S. account and it gets uh, changed to Spanish. So always have a backup. James says, I've watched your PPC masterclass on PPC and lots of other content, but I'm still struggling to find PPC keywords and determine match types for them. You need to do <laughs> you need to do research, but do an auto catch all campaign, a low bid. Just make an auto auto campaign that tar that has all of your products in your tire uh, catalog in it um, and set the bids to like five cents at first or something like that. Do fixed bids or 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 um, I like I like doing fixed bids in this situation. And let that run for a little while. If it's not getting any impressions, slowly increase the bids to like, you know, seven cents, ten cents, fifteen cents. So you start getting some action. Then you'll start getting purchases on there. You'll be able to pull those keywords out um, and your search terms on that particular campaign, and then put them into their own individual exact match or broader phrase, however you want to do it. Uh, you get some data that way. Uh, another way would be, um, you know, using H10 and, and finding your keywords that way or Jungle Scout or whatever tool you like to use to uh, do keyword research. But um, when you're getting, uh, still struggling to find PPC keywords and determine match types. Yeah, I mean, you, you get that once you have, uh, you know, uh, the data. All right, we are, oh, we got one more. Super frog. If I do remote fulfillment to Mexico and Brazil from USA inventory, does that does the listing translate automatically, or do I have to manually do it? There's an option for AI translation now. I think on some accounts, um, but uh, just bear in mind it's going to be really, really bad. Uh, we have a lot of Spanish speakers here at the company, and um, we have to uh, kind of you know manually do the research and um, the actual copywriting because you know certain things may mean different than what uh you know google translate is telling you especially uh types of products that have slang keywords and stuff like that and you'll see that in the search uh, in, in the search uh results on like a cerebro search or something like that but but yeah all right that is it that's our show today um there's the zip poly bag uh we are my amazon guy uh we are full service market marketing agency uh, we are much more than that. We are also uh, an education company. We are here for the community to come answer questions every Friday, every Wednesday, sometimes on Tuesday, and um, help everyone out, uh, us versus Amazon. We also have our courses at mag-school.com. If you want to learn um, and get certifications, uh, we have our mag school stuff here. We are hiring, we're always hiring. You can go to our careers page here and we're hiring for uh, PPC, brand managers, and paid internships. If you wanna just uh, learn marketing at Amazon, uh, maybe you know a little bit, but you wanna really uh, get in there. Um, we've got internships, you know, PPC design. Uh, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have our coaching page here. You can uh, book with any of our lovely coaches and get some one-on-one -on -one time. And um, I think uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate everyone coming today. And uh, we will be back. John will be here on Wednesday with ARL. And we'll be back next Friday to answer any and all of your Amazon seller and vendor questions. Appreciate you all. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and happy selling.